I know you have a complicated history with Starscream. Just promise me you'll return him without excessive force. Transformers Earthspark has wrapped up its final season with the last batch of episodes being released and I gotta say, I feel like this series ends on a really good note. I feel like with every first season of Transformers shows, there are its highs and lows, but I feel like Earthspark definitely has its highs. I wasn't so keen on the second batch of episodes because it just felt a bit slow to me, it felt very sluggish, like the plot lines wasn't speeding up quick enough, and you just really wanted the kind of plots to kind of expand and kind of get the whole breadcrumbs part out of it, and you really wanted more legacy characters, and that's why I'm going to be talking about in this video, everybody's favourite screamer, Starscream. So in the episode Decoy, we briefly get a glimpse of Starscream with red evil eyes. <laughs> now when I watched that scene, I was expecting Starscream to be the big bad of the season, that something would come full circle because Megatron is no longer with the Decepticons. He left the Decepticons to join Optimus Prime on the Autobot side with Ghost, so I can imagine the Decepticons are not going to be pretty happy about that. A leader that they followed throughout the war has now switched sides. Starscream's probably no doubt going to hold a lot of grudges at Megatron for that, and he's going to plot up some evil scheme to escape from Ghost to band all the Decepticons together, and it'll be an Autobot Decepticon showdown, but instead we've got Megatron now with Optimus Prime. That's where I thought the series was heading, but they didn't. They stuck with Mandroid, which is like, okay, Mandroid. I hope we never see Mandroid again after the end of this season. I feel like his arc is wrapped up very nicely, and we definitely need to move on from Mandroid. Because the Decepticons we've had so far in this series have been real threats, especially Nova Storm and Skywarp, some of my favorite characters in Earthspark. The episode in Age Evolution where they were attacking Optimus Prime and Megatron was just incredible action. That was the Earth Spark I was waiting for. I was waiting for that moment in the show because it felt like the stakes were high. Sorry to crash the peace party. We propose a new partnership. Your parts in pieces. But the way how they approached Starscream's character in this series towards the end was something I was not expecting. And I think that worked for the best. Because the way how they approached Starscream was not the typical kind of scenario you'd think of. Like he'd be up to his evil schemes, that he would find a way to take down the other bots. It would just be kind of a repeat of what we've seen before. Instead, we see a Starscream now with blue eyes, so in the episode hashtag oops, we just see Starscream grunting at uh, the evil ghost lady uh, who was uh, Thingy's brother. I don't remember the ghost characters' names very well. I only remember the best one, Agent Schroeder. Uh, his sister, the evil ghost lady, is tormenting Skullcruncher, and Starscream is looking at uh, this evil ghost lady. <laughs> The only thing that confuses me is just the eye colour, why they would have red. Of course, that must have been really early in the show, where they were going to go probably somewhere different with Starscream, with the red eyes, or maybe it was just a way to throw us fans off. I don't know. Fast forward to the episode, What Dwells Within, we see Starscream again. And in this series, Starscream has escaped Ghost, and he is with Nova Storm and Skywarp. Hey, isn't that... Ah... Uh... So you're the Maltos. Where'd they come from? It doesn't matter. They're here now, and they'll make perfect hostages. And his voice actor, Steve Bloom, who, of course, voiced him in Transformers Prime, returns, which one already builds up fan hype, because Transformers Prime Starscream is one of the personal favorites as Starscream throughout the Transformers franchise. 
Now Starscream in almost every canon of Transformers has been approached the same sort of way. He's a treacherous Decepticon who's always fraught in against Megatron's plan, seeking control of the Decepticon army. Armada Starscream, like I already talked about in a very long essay video, was the first series to kind of dive deep into Starscream's torment, the abusive side of their relationship. Because in Generation 1, Starscream got abused quite a lot by Megatron and it was played for laughs up until Armada where they went for a more dramatic, serious approach towards it. And then Transformers Prime expanded on it, uh, but then that series kind of looped itself where Starscream just ended up being his old self again and well, obviously he pays the price for that with the Predacons. Um, he briefly appears in Robots in Disguise where his story kind of continues, but it, nothing really significant happens. With Cyberverse being like one of the few exception shows that actually shows the kind of brutality with Megatron's wrath. But now in Transfer's Earthspark, this is the first time in this series they decide to explore that in a more psychological PTSD kind of way like the aftermath of that abuse. Now at first, Earthspark Starscream is no different from your typical Starscream. He's selfish, he only cares about himself, he's willing to let other people get hurt in favour of looking after his own skin, um, he's still very kind of, not evilish, but he's like, I'd say a little bit cruel in his attitude towards his comrades, like he doesn't seem to care so much about Nova Storm or Skywarp at all. And a symptom of PTSD is a lack of remorse and empathy. <gasps> it wants Energon! No! Help! <sighs> Just get up and run! But then this changes when he gets introduced to the Terran character, Hashtag. Now, midway through the episode, there is a line that Twitch says that triggers Starscream to respond back. What did you expect? Starscream's as selfish as they come. Yeah, you should go back to following Megatron. He wouldn't leave anyone behind like that. Ah, oh, naive child. Is locking Decepticons in prison while he walks free, not leaving us behind? You don't know the real Megatron. The ruthless tyrant who ruled over us with fear and intimidation. Now you can really feel the weight of Steve Bloom's voice, where even if you're not quite sure if Starscream's telling the truth, you do believe him because of that great performance, this sort of really emotional weight to Starscream's voice. Now the Terrans are a good leeway to see the Autobots and Decepticon stories, because they're not affiliated with either side, so they look at the Autobot and Decepticon war from an outsider's point of view. Like when Thrash was sympathetic towards Swindle's situation, and then when it came to Nightshade and Tarantulas, and now we have Hashtag being sympathetic towards Starscream's situation. And with Hashtag going through some sort of similar abuse in a previous episode, home where she was controlled uh, temporarily by Dr. Mandroid, she had her mind controlled so she was doing stuff towards her Terran friends like attacking them uh, out of her control and it kind of had a lasting impact on Hashtag where she felt really insecure, she felt like she could never have really co good control of herself again, there's, there's a lot of anxiety that was suddenly raised in the Hashtag character because getting controlled by somebody else of your own free will um, obviously is a horrifying thing to think about. So when she hears that Starscream was controlled by fear and intimidation by Megatron to do his bidding, it really shivers her spine and kind of really makes her empathise with Starscream and hope to find there's some sort of bond there. And it was kind of a really good scene to show that Starscream was shocked that Hashtag believed him. Or else I- Is this how Megatron treated you? You. Believe me? I believe he hurt you. You don't know me. You couldn't possibly understand what I've been through. Because I can't imagine this is something Starscream hears a lot of. Like, wow, you actually believe me? I've been saying this for 40 years, you know, throughout the whole Transformers franchise. And someone finally, like, kind of believes Starscream that he's getting abused. 
I look at the hashtag and Starscream situation as a similar situation with like uh, Alexa and Starscream, except obviously this time we have a Terran instead of a human. But the bond is still there. The understanding is still there. Hashtag is still trying to help Starscream overcome his, well, basically symptoms of PTSD. That's something I really appreciate this series for, is taking that, that leap, that strive, for not making Starscream just this typical villain, but actually a character that has felt the wrath of Megatron and is still suffering from it. But we can see PTSD symptoms in pretty much all the Starscreams we've ever seen. Like, you can tell, especially this Earthspark Starscream, that he's depressed, his impulsiveness, and he's constantly angry as well, which we see this in this episode. So like these symptoms of PTSD is him being very clingy to Hashtag as soon as she believes him. Like he's always trying to protect Hashtag after that point. After she says she believes him, he now develops this sort of like care for Hashtag. Like he's protecting her from the dweller. Like, throughout this episode, you'll notice Starscream's mood swings just go up and down the entire time. Like, he's sympathetic at one point, and then he's, like, back to being, you know, brash and, like, oh, get out of here, you know, he's screaming and all this kind of stuff. Now, one subtle thing I really liked in this episode that I feel like a lot of people didn't notice or are gonna look at it as an animation error... Now the episode kind of tells Megatron's perspective in a very small way, so we have Ghost not allowing Megatron and Optimus to go down to the depths to stop the Decepticons. Uh, well at this point it's been figured out that Ghosts are corrupt, uh, the evil lady is corrupt, uh, Prime needs evidence of this however. Um, but Megatron goes down the depths regardless uh, to go after Starscream because he tries and pleads with the evil Ghost Lady. This is Starscream! We cannot waste another second hoping he walks into a trap. Not when we can go after him! Optimus Prime, Megatron's constant insubordination has been tolerated thus far. Now that is Megatron's point of view, how he looks at Starscream. How Starscream looks at Megatron, however, completely different. And probably something that Megatron has overlooked about Starscream. The reason why he acts this way is due to his own actions towards him. So, in the episode, Starscream and Megatron come face to face with each other. Now, when Starscream sees Megatron, he isn't wearing the ghost symbol, he's wearing the standard Decepticon symbol. That's not the Dweller, it's... That's how Starscream sees Megatron, not as a member of Ghost, but still as the evil tyrant that he remembers during the war. Now I really don't think this is an animation error because every time we see the Decepticon symbol, Megatron is doing something horrible to Starscream. First time we see the symbol, he's blasting at Starscream. When we see the symbol again, he's slamming down Starscream by using his hand on his face face and then we never see it again now as someone who loves earthspark megatron like what they've done with him in this series has so much writing potential which i think hasn't truly lived up uh, to its potential at all i feel like we've only just had mere breadcrumbs of megatron i wish we had more exploration of megatron which is something they can obviously rectify in season two <laughs> Starscream? It's the Dweller! The Dweller? That's only a myth. Like, you can see the absolute fear in Starscream's face, just being reminded once again of what it was like to be with Megatron. But having to actually relive that and it's not a nightmare this time? Hearing hashtag, you know, tell Megatron to leave Starscream alone was kind of hard to hear in a way because it's like, Oh, no, 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 Earthspark. Don't you suddenly start making me not like Megatron anymore. 
And yeah, they kind of did a number on me. It kind of made me go, wow, okay, how bad was Megatron towards Starscream in just one episode? I'm now looking at Starscream in a brand new light. I want to hear both sides of the story. I want to play Doctor. I want to have Megatron in one chair, and I want Starscream in another chair. Just for my enjoyment. I just want to just, like, listen to both sides of the story now and kind of figure out how them two can make friends. You know, even at the end of the episode, Megatron is, like, saying to Starscream, I won't let you put me back in a cage. What if you could go somewhere safe? Nowhere is safe if it's with you. Oh, it's a shame it ended like that. It kind of gets brought back in a later episode, which I'll go and talk about later, but... Seeing the bond between Hashtag and Starscream in this episode was a real treat. Hashtag. Remember to take care of yourself. So he kind of now develops this sort of attachment when he obviously hears Hashtag story as well, that Hashtag went through something sort of similar. So it's good to see Starscream not just this typical treacherous character, but more as given an explanation as to why he's treacherous, just because he's so insecure, he doesn't trust anyone but himself, he's selfish, and that's the main title of this video. I really think they need to expand on this in the series. I need to see more of this kind of Starscream. I want more episodes with legacy characters because I think that's one of the strong suits of Transformers Earthspark. It's his legacy characters, these new directions they've taken him in. I want to see that expanded upon and I think it can go greater in season two. But there's one kind of thing that compromises this just a little bit. So in the final episode, Mandroid is the big threat. He's managed to control all the Autobots, Optimus Prime, Megatron, Alita One, and the Terrans have to find a way to stop Mandroid. And the Terrans free a few Decepticons that were held captive of Ghost. And the Decepticons don't want to help by the way how they were treated by Ghost, they just want to run off. But when Starscream hears about what the Terrans have done for the other Decepticons, this gets Starscream to rally over Decepticons together to help Mandroid and take down the possessed Autobots. Starscream? The news spread quickly of your... Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you! Yes, okay! That's enough affection. And this, of course, gives Starscream the opportunity to go up against Megatron and get a little bit of payback for all his years of torment. It's just a really great scene, uh, even though Megatron is possessed. Now, if you'll excuse me, I can't resist an open invitation to give Megatron a little what for! This is Starscream's best way of probably letting out his anger and frustration because Megatron's not going to remember any of it. At least, I hope for that matter, Megatron doesn't remember it. Considering that Hashtag remembers how she was possessed, maybe Megatron will remember what Starscream did. But other than that, it, it doesn't get wrapped up because the ending of the series is just all the characters looking out on the sunset, so we don't actually get to see what happened with Starscream and Megatron after Starscream just like bamboozling Megatron. That's kind of it. Now, the main issue I was talking about is that the Decepticons aren't really looked at as baddies anymore for the series because, well, they helped the Terrans uh, with Mandroid. And it's going to feel weird that the Autobots are going to, like, kind of take them on after they've helped them, you know, in that situation. So the best thing Season 2 can do, and I hope it's done right, is that they can find a way to sort of civilize both factions and not let it be a simple good guy this bad guy situation. Of course, there are bad Decepticons, don't get me wrong, Swindle has done his fair amounts of uh, evilness and other characters for that matter. Um, but it's going to be weird going to season two and Starscream does something evil. Like the way how Starscream's been written in this series, it feels really hard to imagine him doing pure evil things now, considering we've explored the fact that he's not pure evil. He was just acting the way he was due to his PTSD, to his trauma, to his experience. He's not actually a bad guy. He's not actually done anything evil in the show. We've not seen him do anything evil. You know, we've been told of horror stories of Megatron through Starscream and other characters like, but it's hard to imagine Megatron going back to being evil, so it's kind of hard to imagine Starscream going back to being schemish. Or maybe he does very briefly, and then there's some sort of new reflection about him that he discovers in, about himself in season two there's obviously a lot more to do with the starscream character but i just don't want to kind of like go back to him being evil 
like we've seen in other canons. Like, I don't want to transfer Prime Starscream situation, where he just kind of reverts back, because it worked for Transfer's Prime Starscream, because Prime Starscream was a different beast on his own. But now, with this Earthbox Starscream, something about it is different, yet familiar at the same time. They've created another interesting dynamic between a thing that's been going on for years, uh, but each incarnation has a unique way of exploring it differently. And I feel like Earthspot now has done that. And it has the real potential to make it one of the main highlights of Season 2. It's like breadcrumbs of Season 1. And now I want it to be fully explored in Season 2. I want legacy characters to have more to do. Instead of the Terrans constantly taking up the whole space of the episodes. Because we've had a whole season of Terrans. Let's have more episodes focused on Atlas Prime and Megatron. Let's actually have more Megatron episode because I feel like they've introduced us to these other characters, Autobots and Decepticons, but have so much potential now. Even Shockwave has so much potential now. Earthspark has made these characters so interesting by the way how they behave with each other, you know, and the way how Megatron and Shockwave are with each other as well in those final episodes. It's interesting. Megatron. Clever using the old Decepticon emergency line. I think you mean ingenious. So there we have it guys. This has been my video on Earthspark Starscream. Of course, share me your thoughts in the comment section below. What do you hope to see for the future of Starscream in Earthspark? I hope Season 2 delivers a lot of great moments with Starscream, Megatron, Optimus Prime, all of the legacy characters. Because that is really what's keeping me engaged in this series. Of course, to keep all updated, on the Transformers Earthspark series, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and click that notification bell to get all updates instantly. This has been Common and Cam, and until the next video, goodbye.